Hey guys, what's up? It's Iflin here, and welcome to episode 16 of Warframe, playing like a pro. And in today's video, we're going to be checking out the Oma, as in, oh my god, these weapons are actually pretty good. So this is how I'm going to do it, guys. Whenever a new weapon or a new frame or something comes out, I will be releasing it in the Play Like a Pro series with the optimal build, I guess. Because whenever I post a first look video, even though it says in the title of the video, first look, and I show like a sort of a basic build, a lot of people like to get on my tail for not knowing the ins and outs of every single frame before I post the video. You know, I do like playing the game as well, you know, I don't just like reading what D.E. Drew sends me to basically relay that information. I like actually playing the game, that's, that's, uh... That's the thing with YouTubers, you know, they sort of just, they, they load up on a bunch of inf information and then they're meant to regurgitate that information in the video and I'm just like, I just want to play the game, man. So let's play the game. But yeah, today we're taking a look at the Oma. I thought the name was pretty amusing. That's why the Oh My God meme at the beginning of the video. But, you know, they're, they're pretty good weapons. I'm not going to say that they're bad. Uh, they came with a new stance and all this other cool stuff, but... It's kind of a weird weapon simply because it hasn't got any of your IPS stats, so impact, puncture, slash, and it's mainly electricity damage and has this sort of quirk to it that whenever you jump and you do a slam attack, it's going to shock any enemy that is basically near you in a particular radius. Now, you can run either a status build or a crit build on this, it doesn't really matter. If you don't want to invest too much into the weapon, just go ahead and run a status build. I still invest uh, one form into the weapon anyway, or I suggest investing one form into the weapon anyway, simply because because then it gives you the opportunity to run both, right? Because you already get a V polarity and a dash polarity already installed in the weapon, which is pretty good. So whenever you're building for crit, it's basically your uh, blood rush body count combo that you'd be running here. So you, you put, I would change this here around actually. So I change Berserker with blood rush and then you put your two uh, most costly mods in your V polarity. So that'd be your prime pressure point max rank and your blood rush there. And then you basically mod for crit. So organ shatter, true steel, Body Count, Blood Rush, Berserker for all your crit, uh, Prime Pressure Point for your damage of course, and then you throw on the element based on the faction that you're going up against, so you can do that there, and then obviously you can throw on your stance, so this is the Sovereign Outcast stance, pretty good stance, I like it because you do like little twirls and stuff, and it basically increases your DPS, it's pretty decent stance, and then obviously if we want to mod for status, we would um, be modding like so, so we'd throw on our Stance mod, and then we'd throw on Prime Fury and Prime Pressure Point, so like so, like that. And then we'd be throwing on our Status Chance mods, and then all of our other mods, and all this other cool stuff. So you throw on Violent Scourge, you throw on Voltaic Strike, Volcanic Edge, and then the rest you can basically just throw on your 90% uh, your damage mods, right? So you'd throw on something like Shocking Touch uh, to increase your Corrosive Damage and Fever Strike, and then your Molten Impact as well. Now, originally I thought this weapon was going to be a uh, impact weapon. I was actually expecting that, like a sort of balance between impact, uh, maybe a little less in the puncture side and a little less in the slash side, and then having a decent status chance and crit chance, making it kind of like the, the Marlock or the Vecor Marlock off your, um, off your melee weapons or your, your, uh, Astilettos as well, you know, they're, they're pretty balanced weapons in terms of stats. But, you know, I'm fine with what we get because, like I said, it's a pretty good weapon. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and spawn in one Corrupted Heavy Gunner at level 130. Hit him up with the best deal. And then this is the status build, which I'm relaying to you guys first. So, this is basically the one which is going to strip the enemy's armor away and then make it so that, you know, we're just hitting their flesh. So, this build, obviously, it's not going to deal that much damage to a level 130 enemy simply because... You know, they have a buttload of armor, but if you were to hit them enough and you proc corrosive enough, it would eventually take that armor off the enemy. You see, we're dealing more damage over time now because we are actually procking our corrosive damage here and there, and that's taking the armor off the enemy, and now he's eventually able to die. So it's not the fastest way to kill your uh, heavy gunners right there or your armor targets. So if you wanted to burst them down a little quicker, I would recommend going with the Blood Rush Body Count one. Simply because, obviously, you're going to be able to build up those combos a lot quicker than you are, like, uh, hoping for those status procs. I almost died there. Derp. So, let's just go ahead and hit him a bunch. And then you're going to be building up your combo as you keep on hitting him. Increasing your attack speed, therefore, increasing your DPS. So, you just keep on going and going and going. 
Theoretically, like I said before, you can basically mod for Blood Rush Body Count combo on like any of your melee weapons because you'll be able to like build up your combo counter like so. So, realistically, you know, Blood Rush Body Count is a pretty good uh, method to go for whenever you're modding a melee weapon. If you want to make something that's a little bit lackluster, a little bit better, but like I said before, there are weapons that do that a lot better. So that's basically the two ways of modding. I wouldn't recommend this as a sortie tier weapon, simply because you don't have those IPS uh, stats on there. So you're not going to be able to take down like your grenier targets or your infested or corpus targets up faster than if you had your impact puncture slash. But, you know, some people can look at a completely elemental weapon and look at it as a positive sort of weapon or not weapon, but a good weapon simply because they're not getting any of the negatives from the IPSs that way they can focus on pure elemental damage I guess. So for simplicity set guys I'm gonna be showing you guys the status build versus a okay maybe he's not there okay I'm gonna go have to gonna have to spawn him in again <laughs> that was a big derp did he like float off the edge or something did he walk off the edge I'm pretty positive I spawned them in but like I said, I was going to spawn in a level 70 heavy gunner right here to show you how quick uh, you're able to take him down with a status build. Like I said beforehand, definitely not a uh, level 130 killer, uh, but it can take down like your level 70s pretty quickly. So this weapon's going to be effective until about the last level of sortie. You can use this in raids, you can use this in sortie too, but if you're going into a sortie free with let's say augmented armor as the debuff uh, to you and the buff to the enemies then this weapon definitely is not the weapon that you want to be bringing in you want to be bringing something that has a high value of whatever IPS uh, stat that you want to take into that sortie so let's say you're going against the corpus you want a high or a weapon that has a high impact stat as well as your magnetic and your toxin damage on there to deal the most damage that you possibly can to said corpus enemies instead of um you know using a weapon like this here which has no IPS stats and basically just losing out of damage simply because a few stats are missing. Now don't get me wrong I'm not saying that weapons that don't have IPS stats are terrible like you just seen there I killed that level 70 heavy gunner relatively quickly with a status build. Obviously if you're, if you're the through on uh, your blood rush body count killed or build killed build <laughs> and uh, build up your combo counter you would essentially be one hitting the level 70 enemies at that point because you'd have the damage multiplier from your crit and your all this other good stuff you know so like i said this weapon is pretty good i that's why i made the funny pun at the beginning saying oh my god this weapon is pretty good because it's called the oh my oh my oh my god oh my god so pretty good weapon i'm not gonna bash it at all uh i like it the only gripe that i really have with it is Looks kind of like an impact weapon, I'm not going to lie. I thought whenever I originally seen this in the dev streams that it was going to be an impact weapon, but turns out it's basically just massive tasers that you're holding. So, yeah, there's that. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot to show off the uh, the jump and the stun. So let's do that versus a bunch of butchers. We'll spawn in about 10 butchers or something. And then basically what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be jumping in the middle of them, jumping and stunning them with the uh, electric. So... That's pretty cool. That's a plus, especially if you're like trying to build your combo counter. You can use that as a quick stun until someone sneaks up behind you and hits you in the back with uh, with an axe, and then you're an axe, uh, a cleaver, and then you're dead. So anyway, guys, that is going to be it for this episode of playing like a pro. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button below, and you want to see more Warframe content from me, hit subscribe. I'll see you guys tomorrow at 6 p.m. at UK time. And I'm also going to apologize for this video being late because it's currently uh, 40 minutes until 6. So. Yeah, <laughs> crap, I'm going to have to edit and export and upload this video. So uh, wish me luck, guys. If this isn't up by six, I apologize.